to find within a 50 mile radius of your house someone doing a Cavendish experiment if you're in anywhere that's even slightly populated. I don't understand why, you just if you, if, you, if you want to look at it, look at it yourself, ask the questions to the people that are doing it. It's, look, know, what, what... you're in fantasy. Kimo just uh, eloquently explained that you, you guys have nothing but talk. The, the only thing you'll accept is if how do you, somehow how do you can explain satellite industry? Model of the Earth. That's the only thing you'll accept. The, if you take what you're saying to its logical conclusion, the only thing that you'll accept as evidence is if somehow we can make a scale model of the Earth, which you know we can't do. It's Hang funny on, how, how do all it, your how do it explain it's not going to attract anything. No matter how big you make it, it's not going to attract anything. Exactly. Exactly that, bro. Well, bro. Explain satellites. If Kimo is back again, I will. I, it doesn't matter if I provide him any evidence; he will not accept it. But do I not explain that, Kimo. Oh, Kimo sounds fired up today. I don't think you stand a chance against him. What my point uh... is, is that you spend all this time in here. Yeah, if you'd have spent the time more productively, there are far better ways of finding this stuff out. But you could go direct to the source if you wanted to, for the amount of time you spend in here. But you'd rather just play pigeon chess in a. FE survey, it doesn't make sense. Kind of like what you're doing? This is just entertainment. I'm going to work tomorrow. I won't be on here tomorrow until the evening. Well, I'll come on for a couple of hours and see what you're saying. It's entertainment for me. Well, it's entertainment for me as well. But What makes what you I'm special? Saying, for, what I'm saying is, no, because you're making it out as if you're, you're looking for truth. And that's the disingenuous bit. You're not. Because if you were, you wouldn't be in here looking for it. You'd be outside doing it somewhere else. It's cold over here, brother. When spring comes, I'll be out. Don't worry. And any you see what I'm saying? What what flat earther in their right mind would come into a globe server looking for truth? How do you guys explain satellites? How do satellites flat satellite phones work? So I want to explain. How do you guys explain uh, star formations? No such thing. There's no such thing as satellite phones. Okay. All right, what about... You mean satellite phones? Yeah, satellite phones exist. How do you explain satellite, trains satellite. On, a, on a round earth? How do trains work on a round earth? <laughs> trains? Yeah, you see how silly... Wait a see second, how dumb guys. that question is? Wait a second, wait a second. Ken, you need to uh, back off your mic a little bit. You come in really, really distorted and hot and poppy. So hang on, hang on. So wait, so train engineers are can, not capable can, of. Um, can you? Can you? Let me see. Don't train engineers. Train engineers take all that stuff into consideration when they're built designing the railways and stuff. So I, I don't can, understand. Can, what, you that hear question? It can, was meant you hear to be a joke. Talk? It was meant to be a joke. Montreal, Wald is trying can, to talk to Ken. Let him. Let can, them talk. Ken Newman, mate, can you please fix your mic or back off it a bit? Because you're coming in really hot and distorted, and you're popping, and you're very breathy. Oh, sir, my bad. That's better. Thank you. No, no, no. It's uh, we were waiting for you, Akimo. Uh, you're on a roll there. Uh, please go yeah, ahead. Explain. Continue. Explain sunsets next, please. Yeah, come on, Kimo. You were talking. No, about Kimo was explaining to you how your fantasy, it's all conjecture, well, it's all. Well, and I, then you, <laughs> well I didn't say that I believe. When we I didn't say that I believe that the earth is a globe. I asked him to explain sunsets. I'm yeah. asking him to explain flat earth, not globe earth. I, I didn't say that I believe in globe earth. I'm just asking him about flat earth right now. It's flat.
Well, let's look for examples of stuff getting cut in half by the horizon, like buildings and the sun and those kind of objects. How do you explain that going on? Well, obviously, shorter objects disappear sooner than larger objects. Hi, hi, let's hi, remember... Hi. I'm not talking about the whole object disappearing. I'm talking about half of it being cut off by the horizon. Uh, your zone of vision is an object of a certain length. If you're six feet above the flat surface, effectively you have a six-foot object. Fair enough, fair enough. From fair your enough. eye level down but what to I'm the ground. Saying, but what I'm saying is that if there's a building, for example, and it's cut off in half by the horizon, what are you saying? Are you saying that one half of the building is... <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how you're asking. Every the Wait. level of the eyes, shorter objects will converge faster, like a six-foot zone of vision from your eye level down, and bigger objects, like the 100-foot of building from your eye level up, will converge later toward the level of the eyes. So basically, you you're going to have a horizon in the foreground that's for a six-foot zone up and down from the level of the eyes that will ramp together and make a horizon line in the foreground and the 100-foot object that's taller than that visual zone will have to set into the level of the eyes behind that horizon. Uh, so, so, around. Okay, fair enough. So, so the horizon saying... always rises to high level? The horizon rises toward the level of the eyes as far as we can see by looking down a hallway. It doesn't. Yes, right. it does. Right. If you observe the like... horizon, it's below. But if I look down a hallway, I can always see, a, see the object. Um, the object appears to disappear because it's getting too far away from my eye resolution to make it out. But if I take out, um, I don't know, binoculars or something, I can, you know, see the object because, you know, it's magnified and is now visible again. But that's not the case with the buildings. If you take out binoculars and you, you know, in these cases where you have very tall buildings and they disappear bottom first of the horizon, even if you take out binoculars, you can't see the bottom of the building again. That's you can see more of the building, though, but after a while, it's so smushed and compressed, no optic can bring it back because it's just beyond the power of the resolution what, of the optics. But where would that be the case if I can see craters on the moon, and the moon is like, I don't know, like thousands or whatever? There's nothing like, obstructing you and the moon? It's up, you have a direct line of well, atmosphere does, to the moon. Yes, You get wider, oh, higher oh, angles oh, away from the level of oh, the oh. eyes, so the moon is in a higher visual zone, and then it's, it's in a wider, more mm -hmm. ample angle. The most when compression happens toward push. the level of the eyes. When oh, you yeah. push um, the optics oh. on Earth, you get compression mm -hmm. bands? Okay. And you guys have experimented and tested all this stuff, so you have actual valid evidence. What's that it demonstrates the well, sort, well, you um, do. There's, there's, the, oh. there's the natural but, resolution <clears throat> of your mm -hmm. eye, mm -hmm. and then once you push the focal length out fully, um, you'll go beyond your, the optics of your eye, so, and then you'll get a compression band like to the, to the water or whatever's obstructing your view from the atmosphere to whatever's in front of your eye. Um, I posted a picture in chat uh, where a person zooms onto the boat. I know it's a meme, but uh, it's not relevant. Like, you can only see the, the sails. What happened to the other half of the ship, like the bottom one? You're not you can't in zoom in. Uh, I mean, it's another dimension. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. kidding. If you zoom on more, you can see the fiber on the sail if you zoom in more. You can see, like, the sails are full screen. He's fully zoomed sure. in. But one question, but one, another question. In the chat, I, I want to there's get a three-hour video like... that goes over the diffraction limit. Please watch it. It talks about how perspective and vision would work over a flat plane with the diffraction limit. That's all bullshit, Lemon. Question, it's question. It's all um, science. I believe no, science. I believe this. You don't have science. Not, none of that science. It's all bullshit made up crap that doesn't make any I sense. I believe the physics. <laughs> you don't there's, even have physics okay. to believe in. All right, hang on. There's millions of people in the satellite industry. I made to believe that. No, there's every not. Single person You're wrong. <laughs> oh, well, okay. satellites right, can be floating over there. here. There's not Most millions of people in the satellite industry. <laughs> the flat satellites are floating over a flat, motionless well, wait, plane. I'm not talking about. But all right, but but hang on. Okay, but Thousands we agree that there are many here. people employed in the solid industry. Am I supposed to believe that every single person employed in the solid industry is a, I don't know, what do you guys call it, a, a PhD? Most people keep that? their head down and do their job. They don't think about what they the other hand is doing. So to uh, put a number into a little database and but, say, look, it's changing. 
What about the satellite that I have in but orbit? The point is, I got a signal of myself. But the point is that we it's get, floating yeah, over yeah, a flat motionless satellite. Can you prove that? Yes, I can. How could you prove in it? The U.S. space-related industry has about the Earth is in a globe. people employed, and in Russia it has about 250,000 people employed. All right, another an, another question. Um, so let me see. Pilots, right? Pilots. <laughs> well, well, obviously, pilots like go from continent to continent. So obviously, if the Earth is flat. The, the I would think that the directions yeah, that pilots take would be radically different. I mean, I, I've heard this idea that pilots move in a circle and they don't even realize it. Is, is that true? You guys really believe that pilots fly in a circle? The North Pole would be in the center. If you're yeah. talking about east-west, you can cut that. straight across, or you can go in an east-west circle around mm -hmm. the central North Pole. East-west east, but, east -west would basically follow the sun as it circles over the flat plain. North would be the center. South would be out toward the outer rim or the outer perimeter. <laughs> That doesn't give accurate navigation whatsoever. Mm. It's enough, fine. The navigation is fine. You, they basically take flat it. maps and superimpose it onto whatever map they prefer. Yeah, low, flat, or whatever. No, if they no, did that, Lemon, then there would be a trudge factor for distances. Because there would be no issue at all. None. No, no. Uh, look at the picture I posted in the chat. Proves you wrong. Sorry. But, but hold on. But you acknowledge, That's a but, strong, you, man. But, but you acknowledge, but you acknowledge though that different that. Uh, directions will be far different on a flat Earth. You you, you acknowledge that, or, or you don't? East West uh, would wide. still be around the Central North Pole. There's no qualitative change. What, it... <laughs> what about in the Southern Hemisphere? So you don't acknowledge that will be different. You don't acknowledge that will be different. Eh? No um, significant difference. Point out the difference. What difference would there the be? Look at the chat. I I I, I can't believe that. All right, let me see. So Ken, Ken, what would happen if you right, go to see. Globe? Yeah. Ken, what would happen if you got a globe and cut it mm -hmm. and flattened it out? Yeah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Distortion. It wouldn't represent reality. Wouldn't match what we measure on the surface yeah. of the Earth. The difference, the, the distances between distances are going to change, I would think. Yeah. But that's my point. My point is that because that distortion, because, I mean, it, to me, it's obviously, if you... Again, if you take a globe, as you're saying, and you cut it in half and you flatten it, things are going to get distorted. Distances are going to change. You can't, you can't say that. <laughs> I, I, I don't even believe it. You can't say that you could just do that and the directions that are being taken to get from place to place are going to stay the same. Just the distances wouldn't change. Oh, you can say any crap you want to on here. It doesn't matter. Of course they would. Just, just, just go for it. Just any shit you want. Just make it up, you know. And it helps how, if, if you've got some <laughs> kind of substance on board to aid how, your mentality. That helps how a lot. The, how would some the, the, some of the, best how the distances on this change? Are completely off their heads. How would the distances change, Ken? Ken, it might also would be much more entertaining if you went full patois. So if you could do that, it would be great. Because the only th reason why we're asking is we're getting a bunch of rhetoric, but you're not telling qualitatively how there would be any difference. You so see, we all we're getting is a bunch of rhetoric, but what you're not doing is qualitatively telling us anything other than bullshit. So you have a globe and you cut the globe. How is that distorting the land masses or their positions? Because the layer globe down flat, you've got the problem of the fact you're taking a curved environment and then flattening it out. To do that, you're going to have to stretch it in some way to get that so, flat surface on the table. That's where you get your distortion from. I mean, not if you iron it. It doesn't no, matter don't. if you iron it all, or I mean, not. All can if do... you iron it, you'll iron a crease into it. It won't be flat. You don't have to stretch anything, though. No, you, yeah, no, you do. If you cut up into small enough bits, you don't of have to do you have of course you have to. All I can tell you is to... All I can tell you is to take a model, like, do it do it as a 3D model, and you will see it. It, it distorts. You can't get away from it. It has to distort. It, it's, um, it's like if you apply textures or something, the textures are going to distort based on the... Uh, on the geometry yeah. is just a fact and you could deny yeah, it but, yeah yeah, yeah. You, you're, that's right you can't get away from it but you can just outline well, one, one other thing you, you, you can just deny it that's what happens here just lots oh, of denial oh, just just oh. listen to everything and then deny it 
<laughs> Traveling half a million miles an hour through the universe. Good luck. What's so unbelievable about that? I think it's a human back. Hang on. I yeah. never, I never argued for that model. So I'm just asking because F. If there are people in here that actually believe in the flower of mall, I'm just asking them for clar- clarity on what they believe in. That's all. And do you do you guys believe that the sun goes underneath the clouds? I've heard flower for say that also. Is, is that a belief that you it guys can't believe? if it's 93 million miles away, right? We don't believe in flat Earth anyway. <laughs> Hang on, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm not arguing for that. I'm asking you guys what you believe. Do you believe that well, the sun we don't goes believe the in anything? How could this? Oh, okay. How could the sun go underneath the clouds if it's 93 million miles well, away? Well, I've heard flower for say that. I've, I've heard flower for say that, so I'm just... Well, how could it go under the clouds if it's 93 million miles That's away? Something. Answer his question. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how far do you guys believe? Do you guys believe in... Yeah, yeah man. Kimo, I have some. Uh, I have an experiment which provides evidence for mass attracting mass. This experiment was conducted in a chamber which was surrounded by um, mu metal, which uh, helps against electrostatic. It was done in a vacuum chamber. It was uh, the heat was consistent, it didn't change, and of course there was no air. And uh, the only thing which was changed in the experiment was the position of the mass. Yeah. Three to ten thousand miles away ish, based off of it appears to be three to ten thousand miles away by triangulation and sextants without the assumption that the earth moves through space. You can tell that it's about three thousand miles away ish because you can get a sixty, um, sixty the, uh, degree angle to the sun at the equator. When you're about three thousand miles away from the subsolar point, uh, sorry, forty-five degrees, forty-five degrees, and so that so triangle shit. gives you a forty-five, forty-five, ninety triangle with two sides that are equal. The two sides that are equal are three thousand miles away from the subsolar point, equal to three thousand miles away from uh, the subsolar point up to the sun, based off of that. Uh, the shadow angles don't agree with that. Hold on, hold on. You just said that the they do. Sun is three thousand miles away, right? So how come when the sun goes down if towards that, the horizon, but... right, I can still see the sun, but yet I can't see a building that's 60 miles away? Now, apparently, Obviously, the I building is smaller. I can't see the building because of the Earth's atmosphere or whatever bullshit you come out with. So how come I can still Obviously, see the Obviously, the sun would be bigger. More, more atmosphere. Yeah. Obviously, the sun would be bigger, so you're going to see it for longer. And lit objects break angular size rules, and they're seen for much lo- much longer. Anyway. Based on what? Based on what? Based on what? Based on what? Based okay. off of a candle. A candle disappears due to perspective and angular size much sooner this, than it does when it's lit. Bullshit without addressing any of the criticism. Lit objects bit, are seen for much longer than they are when they're not lit. Him, and then just drone. Right. Fair on. enough. Explain light hoses, then. Explain light hoses, please. Lighthouses, lighthouses are lit, would right? be possible over a globe because a, a hump of Earth curvature would be in the way of the lighthouse. No, 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 no. No, but I'm, I'm asking about lighthouses in 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 um in that same specific example you guys were talking about just now, because you were you were arguing that the building would not be seen because it's not lit. The purpose of a lighthouse is to be lit, right? And, and it's a tall building, right? Or... Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you connect by back to connect that back to your uh, previous example? Dude, you're not gonna reason with him. All I'm gonna do. You're roboting. Uh, yeah, Kimo. Uh, the host experiments. I can post a basic description of it. Cutting in and out, Kimo. We can't understand you. But you'd be more likely to see a, a lighthouse over a flat plane. Without a hump of Earth curvature in the way, it says from square to curvature better, down and away from the observer. Is that any better now? Yes. Sound good. Thank you. So we're missing eight inches per yeah, square uh, curvature. Hold on, let, lemons talking, Sammy. Lemons. 
Eight inches per mile squared of curvature is what we're using to falsify the ball. We're seeing way past that. Yeah, but it doesn't work. It Why doesn't work a, because we're on a flat plane. Why can't I use a telescope to see, uh, let me see. If I'm in Australia, why can't I see Tasmania from Australia? And these are not scientific questions. First of all, uh, perspective makes objects get smaller and smaller to the point where you can't make them out, even if there's nothing in the way like looking at a coin. Second of all, the diffraction limit is a thing where the light rays will appear to be too compressed for you to make out a 2D image. All you'll see is an unresolved horizon line. No such thing as light rays. Unless it's a scientific question. If I'm in Australia, I can see the sun setting, right? I can see the sun getting gets Split in halfway to horizon. Yes. But it can't see Tasmania. Uh, Wait. So by that logic, that implies that the sun is a bigger object. It appears to be about 32-ish miles in diameter, but with refraction over no. a flat plane, <laughs> making objects magnify and bigger than they normally oh. are. Even that could be exaggerated, okay. but it's like we have a 32-ish mile diameter sun. Um, the fact that at sea, sailors took 32 miles to get out from under the sun to get a shadow. Carmen, how did you measure how far away the sun the sun is? By using 45, 45, 90 triangles in geometry. 45, 45, 90 triangles say that there's two sides that are equal. The two sides for a 45, 45, 90 triangle um, to get a 45 degree angle up to the sun would be the distance to the subsolar point under the sun from, that, from you to that uh, subsolar point being equal to the distance to the subsolar point under the sun. You get okay, about 3,000 miles to get a 45 degree triangle at the equator-ish. All right, and now, so that now that you have asserted miles. this and you're accepting this mathematics here, um, why is it that from other distances this they don't agree with this? Because they have the assumption that the Earth is moving, making the um, uh, triangle exaggerated. No, and no that's a lie. Size. That's a lie. We're going to nip that, that one in the bud. No, no. At the same moment, if you take measurements from other distances from the subsolar point, the altitude of the sun above your flat plane that you desire to have so much, they don't agree with each other. Nor would they, because of refraction. First of all, to triangulate an oh, object, you so see it. The 3,000 mile height, which it's really more about 3,100 and change. Why is that one okay for you to use, and you're not worried about refraction with that? It has less assumptions. You have to assume that the Earth is moving through space millions of miles. That's There's not no backed up by a sensation. Involved in this. You, sir, are a belligerent, deliberate liar. There's no motion. I'm a belligerent, deliberate liar? That there's more assumptions yes. that we're moving millions of miles through space? With no in evidence the, in the measurement and observations that we're talking about at the moment, we're assuming none of that. Okay, well, first you have to prove that the Earth moves. No experiment proves that the Earth moves one jot or one tittle. So until then, 3,000-ish miles. With you don't have to one point at a time. I don't have to prove a thing about motion when we're talking about just measuring this angle that you are using to try to support your brain-dead assertion. And well, again, you're, you're assuming that, that it's moving millions of miles through space, but what? you haven't proved that. What are we saying? Right, I got shit to do at the moment. I can't. I can't beat you up anymore. I'll be back. Uh, hold on. Okay, hold uh, on. Uh, you used the, hold on. In your calculation, you use the word "ish." I mean, w when somebody says, "What's ten plus ten? Do you say, "Oh, it's twenty-two ish"? In astrology, number. In so astronomy. Why doing a calculation and saying, oh, it's this kind of ish. Because if you were doing a calculation, you would come to an exact number. That's not how things work in astronomy. At best, they get ballpark yeah. figures anyway, so I feel no compunction to be super exact. That's the method. You're going to get a ballpark no, figure with that. No, no. You, you said that you created two triangles to work out the distance to the sun, right? Now, if you're working with two triangles, right, then you would be able to come to an exact number.
Yeah. It would be a ballpark number because perspective makes uh, parallel lines and the angles that you derive off of those parallel lines unreliable because parallel lines due to perspective, visual perspective, appear to converge, merge, and disappear, making your angles increasingly unreliable and increasingly unable to be drawn with greater distance due to perspective with everything converging and merging. So at best you would get a ballpark figure, especially if the object is removed from your eye level. But you just said it's unreliable. So why are you even using it if it's unreliable? Because That's of the uh, number of assumptions. It's to show the number of assumptions we have when we're making these distances. They assume that the oh, Earth was moving millions of miles through space. That's not justified. Okay, so now, now we're using unreliable mathematics yeah. with, loads of, with loads of assumptions. Mm -hmm. Really scientific this does. So we'll get a ballpark figure and we'll have to verify it by walking up to the sun. Unless there's a government in the way. Ken, are you still here? What, what we'll do is we'll take all these assumptions and we'll take some unreliable yeah, yeah, mathematics and we'll work out some shit and then determine the Earth is flat from that. Just like they did for astronomy to uh, make, uh, cobble together the ball. Yeah, that's not correct. The, That's actually the, what they did. Read King's Dethroned. It goes over all of the erroneous assumptions within astronomy. No, there's, yeah, there's there's no That's not true. None of that is true. None of that is true. Uh, Lemon, you said the Earth is not moving. How did you determine that? I can't feel it with my feet. That doesn't okay, prove anything. You are aware, aware of that you cannot feel motion at all. He trusts you his feel, senses. Oh, what yeah. you feel is actually what you what you feel is acceleration. It's not motion, right? My you know, senses are senses adequate to the movement in other is acceleration and only above a, a certain threshold. Are My you aware of that? Adequate to feel a movement in other instances. They're adequate even now. Yeah, but your your senses don't feel motion. You have no sense for motion. That makes no right? sense. I can feel twenty miles in a car. And I can't feel 66 no, pounds per hour around. No, the that is that not correct. Make sense. That is not correct, yeah. Levin. What you feel uh, are the vibrations, and you can see the, the landscape rolling. That's why you know you are moving. You do not feel the motion. You feel the acceleration and Don't deceleration. Don't speak to him. Don't speak to him right. in a hypnotic NPC <laughs> voice. <laughs> that is, no, you don't need to wait, night. Just well, be that is stop case, trying to right? hypnotize him. Just you, you. Just be quiet. No need to white knight. Well, the thing is, um, we would feel the change of the motion of the Earth against us, of the rockets against us at 66,000 miles per hour. It has to change constantly to have an elliptical circular uh, orbit. So intuitively, you would say that you'd probably yes. feel that. Yes, that, 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 is, that, is an, that is an acceleration, but it's too low to be felt. Are you aware feel of that? that? anyway, because gravity acts on everything at once. Uh, um, he know, he's yeah. aware of that. He's lying. I'm aware that there's no experiment then, that proves that the Earth is one dot or one tittle. It is philosophically assumed without evidence. No, then why are you coming, always coming up again and again with the same thing when you have been told that over and over that motion cannot be felt? Only what can be felt is acceleration. Above because you don't have let the. Me um, finish, let me finish, let me finish. Above a certain threshold. And it's acceleration, not motion, that can be felt, right? Because your framework is is busted, you need no, to tell if you're moving. You need to have a substance to move through, and you abolish that with the ether the moment it pointed to an, uh, a motionless Earth or an Earth that was moving much more slowly than you anticipated. So you don't even have a framework to prove what you're talking about. You just metaphysically assume it because you have a philosophical commitment to a non-scriptural model where the Earth has to move like a Greek pagan ball. You have no framework to prove what you're talking about. So, so I don't trust you. I, 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 know I, have, I have shown that I have shown that here on Earth you came up with an example of a car. And I told you you don't feel the motion, you feel the acceleration and vibrations, which are also a form of acceleration. Right? Everything's in vibratory motion, even in current physics. Everything vibrates. So when okay, we feel that constantly but what does that have to do with your point that you claim yes, that and you don't Earth have framework to prove what you're talking about because guys, 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 you guys, you've got to let um, you've got to let the other person talk, okay, guys. Yes.
Yeah, so, T-Y. guys, guys, come on, stop over talking me. Stop over talking me. Hi. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me stop over talking me. So, um, Lemon was trying to say something. Lemon, just if you could make your point more condensed and tighter and quicker, and then we can get a response sure. from the other guys. Everything's in vibration, though. Everything's in vibration. Yeah, so, no point to talk about that's not relevant. Relevant. acceleration. You haven't even done that, so I can't even believe you because you haven't given a framework by which I can believe you. You haven't talked about the threshold uh, uh, beyond normal vibration that I would feel with the Earth. Use and then on top of that, you have the Earth moving through nothing, which is absurd. Yeah, um, I'm moving through a vacuum, nothing as opposed to a substance. So I can't even tell if I'm moving, like putting my hand outside the window. And also, yeah, the I'm Earth is not enclosed. You have several problems physically. Go. You trust the science. That's all there is to it. I trust the physics. Okay. And the physics so you know says physics, that obviously. we're probably not moving or we're moving no, much more slowly than they physics say. Physics is the physical world. Yes. Uh, you know, so one experiment uh, appears behaves. to point to a less um, uh, fast moving Earth and or emotionless Earth with at best this etheric substance gently swirling over it. There's no science There's for the ether. ether. Yet they go to space time, space quantum time. phone, quantum fluid, and other things that make space a substance. So I'm not seeing consistency in what you're talking about. I don't even understand any of that. I understand you're, it. You're time. stuck on acceleration versus velocity. You don't, you don't understand quantum foam. Don't, don't, don't fucking bullshit. Just because I rejected your metaphysical nonsense with no relation to reality doesn't mean that I don't understand at least some of what they're talking about. You oh, don't ask me that is what that is. Therefore, you have no way to tell if you're moving at all. What Can difference you do you feel if you're going 100 miles an hour in a car versus 10 miles an hour in a car? Your framework's busted and inadequate. Why would I accept it? Doesn't answer my question. Doesn't answer my question. Okay, so you big, can't answer the question because you don't know if it's a big. There's a big difference between 10 and 100. What is it? What, 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 what do you feel? What's the sensation that you get? It's not even what the sensation is. What part of your body detects speed? <laughs> None. Let them answer, because they're making this claim. You can detect the difference. Mm -hmm. And how is that different from an airplane going 700 miles an hour? Well, right. What, what, what organ in the body lets you detect speed? Lemon? Because so when he seems like this, he just shuts down. He, he ran away. He left. Bye-bye. Is the Bye -bye. Earth a car? Is the Earth a car, a plane, or a train? Oh, that wasn't the yeah, question. Yeah. That wasn't the Girl, question. What, what part of your body detects speed? Well, the concept is the same. Motion. Yeah. In a constant motion versus acceleration. The constant is the concept is the same. Can you if you're in a car or question? on a planet. Right? It doesn't answer. Merle, right. did you have an answer about which part of the body detects speed? Your brain. Um, no, there's not an organ on the brain or a part of the brain that detects speed. What physical mechanism does it use to detect speed? Nothing, Merle? The brain doesn't detect things. It barely has pain receptors. The covering of the brain does have quite a few pain sensors. The brain itself, it doesn't. They don't need to anesthetize your, your actual brain to do surgery there. So, so nothing, Merle? You were talking before. Now you're quiet? Well, you're not answering my question. What Go question ahead. What's your you question? Ask? Is the Earth a car, a train, or a plane? I said yes. No. It's, it's neither of those things. So it's not contained. Okay. So, so we feel the wind. Lemon, Lemon, what part of your body detects speed? Mm, the canals in the ear. Wrong. Mm, that's not true. They don't detect speed. Because a car is contained. What do you hear tell you when you're on a plane? Like a linear motion. You an airplane and you go in 700 miles an hour. How does that feel different from, from standing still? If you're in a contained thing without the wind blowing against you, it feels pretty, you know, constant. But you're in a contained... So if I put you inside a wind tunnel, in an inside airplane inside a wind tunnel, you could tell that you're actually standing still? 
Uh, the airplane's contained. That's not my question. So the Earth is not contained, so your analogy falls apart. It makes all the difference, because you can't move. But you in said the hours. ear detects speed is not true, Lemon. You have a problem. You're claiming that we can detect something that we don't have a mechanism to detect. So you're saying there's nothing in the body that can detect speed? That's yes, correct. Uh, say it's not acceleration. An organ or a tissue or a cell that can detect speed. The uh, inner ear Who's, canal can detect is um, that ocean exactly, on is, a Hang on a second. You're there's something about here. Acceleration. Is, is this um, scientifically proven fact? Yes, yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. Biology. There, is no, there is no speed gun in your body. You have an accelerometer, which is the semilunar canals in your ear, but that's an accelerometer. Just like the mm -hmm. device in your phone, it can't tell you how fast you're going. It can only detect acceleration or changes in speed or direction. The GPS can tell you how fast you're going, but that's based on orbital satellites, because Earth is a globe. <laughs> Those satellites are hovering sure over a flat, motionless plane. Prove it. You know, that was kind of a non sequitur, Gabe. You know, I mean, they're stuck on this first point that they've made, where they yes, committed to the fallacy of saying, "I can sense how fast I'm going," when yes, they sorry, have no reason there. to think and, they could but, do that. And when, but you and can. When someone in, you can. And when someone in the of you in the future is coming up with that argument, a pseudo argument again, we know that you are trolling from now on. No, no, yep. because no, no, I'll always refute it because I used to ride a bicycle. And I can't move through the atmosphere without creating some kind of wind differential. It's impossible. It's physics. They um, obfuscate and say you're feeling the wind against your skin but not speed. They, you know, uh, obfuscate and get technical about it and say you're technically feeling the wind against you and we're moving through vacuum space, therefore there's no wind, which okay. is absurd. Very that well, let's do it Very good. The wind does not tell you how fast you're going because you don't know whether that's the wind speed or your speed, Lemon. So well, something is moving minute. against something else. That's the point. So, Without a substance of space, example, like ether, you can't tell if you're moving. Not okay, without so, appealing the metaphysics. So, Lemon, you think that if I put you inside a wind tunnel, inside an airplane, that you could tell that you're actually standing still? The airplane is contained. No? Answer my question. Yes or no? The wind tunnel in the airplane is contained. The Earth is not contained, so why are you even talking about that? And now it's not contained. You you contained in a dome? Be are you saying that the vacuum of space is a container? You're what the you one saying? who says that the Earth is contained in a dome. This is your yes, position. It's not moving. You are refuting right now because it benefits what you're arguing for. And you're appealing to something that's contained the despite the fact that you have no containment. Now. That's what's making what you're saying you're absurd. You're, you're appealing to something that's contained to make your, your point. Proposition that there's a dome on the earth now. So you're throwing it away. You're being but you're appealing to a contained airplane container. when you don't have containment in your model. That's a little inconsistent. No, the inconsistent yeah, we do. We have gravity. Is your model. Gravity can't be a container. Not you're everything the goes with the flow of gravity. Contained. It's gravity can only be a container if everything goes where the gravity directs it to. That's not the case okay. with clouds going in 90 degree opposition to each other. They're not even going in the same direction. So, so how can gravity be a container? Expand multiple forces it makes the the air move gravity right well. is not a force there, Gambino. So how are you including gravity? What is a force? Just another thing you don't understand. You're using inconsistent, mind-killing metaphysics. Maybe we need another model. It sounds like it's not, you need a model is that you need to stick to the one that you've already proposed in the past. You said that there's a yeah, genius. Your model proposes you're traveling at 1.5 million miles an hour right now, genius. So what? what? Your model proposes. Not compared to relative to what? Right? That's your next not question. Not compared to anything that's relative local to my what, position genius? and my <laughs> scale. You what are the delusional. Well, philosophy what is unbelievable is relative to something, isn't it, Essie? What is, so about, about hey, what, is so what is so unbelievable about that? What is so unbelievable about that? How many million miles? Practical oh. demonstration Just the fact required. That you have to ask that question precludes that you are delusional. Than too so, big. so you're, are you telling me? Guys, that, guys, guys. You, I'm just letting you know that uh, I'm in the room. Carry on. 
Hello. Uh, take a ball and cover it with water like the earth uh, covered in water. Throw it through the air. Notice how the water drags behind the ball. So there's no practical de demonstration, even with the ball covered in water, of what the earth would be doing at uh, 10 times that speed at 66,000 miles per hour. This is absurd. Are, are you doing this demonstration but water, on Earth with gravity? But water clings, water clings yes. to objects, though. Water and will cling on to the Earth, ball, yes. with the gravity that's extremely strong, you still have the water dragging behind the tennis ball. So we still have exactly a problem. We're talking about Dr. one Big, RPM per year. Dr. Um, Big the Gambino. The, 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 the uh, orbit around the sun. And no, we're talking no, no, no. One nice revolution try, a day when 1, we're talking miles about an hour the, uh, the rotation of the Earth. Um, One thousand. I can't thanks, put my thanks, finger yet in my mouth. Thanks for letting when we me get finish to the my millions, point. I'll I really that. appreciate that. I see. Please repeat your point, sir. So, when we're talking about the sixty-six thousand miles, we're actually what we're talking about is one revolution per year. And when we're talking about the one thousand miles at the equator, or one thousand and sixty-six, or whatever you want to call it, that's one revolution or one RPM per twenty-four hours. Or 23 hours. That's like, where the magic minute. speak comes in, Lemon, but I'm sure you're aware of that. The you magic speak, another motion. That's, that's, that's facts. You know, revolutions you miss, per minute are important. You miss the most core speed. Which one's that? Half a million miles an hour. 1.5 million miles an hour. Mm. Where do you see that? Merle. And what's it stated? Yeah. What's it stated relative to? Uh, didn't I say you were going to ask me that question? The first thing yeah, I said, right? question. It's about. Didn't I say that? No, but you've yeah, got you've know. got three you've got three speeds. Yeah, and well, then you've got the more than that, Merle. What's wrong? Yeah, with I, that? I know, but but you've at least got the fundamentals. Yes, there are different coordinate Merle. systems that could be used. That's ordinary Merle. science and physics. Well, did you question Jimi Hendrix when he said a million miles an hour girl is the speed I drive? Come on, Merle. <laughs> don't be like cross town traffic. How old are you? I'm just trying to get through to you. It's going to be the start of a hell to skelter if you do. Well, the thing is, um, we just don't see practical demonstration that we're spinning or moving. We just don't see it. Pharaoh compass. World didn't answer. Uh, a what? A pharaoh compass? What's that? Gyro compass. Uh, the gyro compass is going with the movement of the ether in and out of the device more than likely over a stationary unmoving Earth. We see no evidence of the ether, no practical demonstration of it. We see breadcrumbs that lead to some sort of substance of space flowing over. Practical the demonstration, ether. show me the ether. Give me a bucket the of practical the demonstration. Uh, space can't be a oh. nothing logically. Do you you know, you know what he's claiming. Of space he, time, Gambino, he's making this claim play. about wow. the ether with no explanation whatsoever. How well, ether can move a gyro. To point so north, well in and out of the um, gyro, giving trips most commonly. See a there practical demonstration of this. This whole thing. One, is a yeah, I want the big show. Gambino One, to cut me a piece of fabric of space time. I want to make. Uh, I want to make a suit, Gambino. You can't do that because that's One, a good thing to do. Say. One thing Jimi Hendrix did say, Curved, was um, let me live my life the way I want to. Uh, That's fine. Go ahead. As long as you don't spread bullshit. Merle, I'm Speaking not changing the way you live your life. We're having a discussion. We're talking about things that we disagree about. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is not me telling you, Merle, you have to go do X or Y. This is not anybody exerting any control over you or forcing you to do something. If you don't want to discuss this, nobody's making you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the gyro compass, I heard, SC, I heard you on Brandon the other day said that the gyro compass could orient to the east or the west and that it wasn't necessarily oriented to the north. Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. I did some research on the mechanical gyro compass a while back, and I found out that you can make the mechanical gyro compass point to any cardinal direction. That's by changing the dial on it. Yep. The markings on it, but it always yep. orients with the rotation of the Earth. No, incorrect. No, they you're start it. You can start mm -hmm. it. Uh, it ha the mechanical gyro compass on uh, on boats i believe it was i forget how many thousands of tons 
they have to be on board. Now, mechanical gyro compass, you spin it before the boat starts moving, and you can orient it to any cardinal direction. By rotating the bezel, yeah. The indicators, yeah, it can rotate, but the axis of the gyro compass action is parallel with the rotation of the Earth. Yeah, cool story, bro. Do some research and find out. I just out. did. Yeah. Just yeah, did. you just said words. I told you no. and you agreed with me that the mechanical gyro compass can you be just made said to point words, to any cardinal All you direction. Said was words. What, what's the difference between my words and your words? My words are correct and yours are not. No, your words yours are wrong. Are kind of right. Yeah, whatever, dude. Do some research on the mechanical. Don't choke on your protein. And you Esty, will find please. out. To even begin to believe that this is a thing, we need to hover over the Earth while it spins below us. We don't even see that. So we don't have the pieces in, in no, place. And hold on, hold on. If you think that the, mecha the mechanical gyro compass is, works because due to the Earth's rotation, right? Is that what you think? That's what it says. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that on a silver, on a silver platter, right? Now you got to... Okay. Show me the rotation of the Earth. Go. How would you propose to see it? Standing on the surface or standing far away? That's your problem. I okay. mean, I'll just launch a probe to interstellar space and show want. it. Show me deviation if you like. Full call pendulum. Gyro compass. And no, 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 no. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's something here. There's something here. Def shush, shush, shush. There's something here. When you send the probe... Could you um, look down and exactly know the rotation of the Earth based by looking at it rotate? Sure. You can put a geostationary probe in, into orbit, and you'll see that the Earth stays still because it matches your orbital speed. You could put something in low Earth orbit. You could put something in high Earth orbit, polar orbit. A polar orbit will show the, uh, the ground track of the rotation. So you and should be able to show deviation, right? Throw a ball up at the deviation equator? Deviation of what? Uh, let's yeah, say you're standing sure. at the equator. You can throw a ball and watch it whiz away at a thousand miles an hour. No. Why would it do that if the Earth is rotating? Why would that happen? Well, you tell me, genius. It wouldn't. There's no That's physics that would make that happen. Work, yeah. Oh, so hold on a second. We have a ball rotating under our yeah. feet at a thousand miles an hour. Not rotating we throw under your an feet. object in the air, and it's logical to you that we see no deviation. Is that what you're saying, genius, Gambino? Conservation of momentum. Yeah, Am I standing on this ball when it's rotating? The hey, what's atmosphere. the starting condition of the, of me and this ball that I throw? Atmosphere is moving with the Earth, all that stuff. Okay, let's, let's go one at a time. Oh, so the atmosphere is moving one. with the Earth, so there goes your Coriolis, right? No, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter if there is an atmosphere at all. Even if the Earth had no atmosphere at all, it was total vacuum. You threw a ball in the air, it will land back in your hand. But yeah. this defies common sense because uh, air cannot move with an object unless it's contained by practical demonstration. Gravity. So what is the container for the Earth? Gravity, gravity. cannot contain yes, unless everything is going where the gravity directs it. That's um, belied by the fact that we have um, cloud columns and air columns that go in 90 degrees opposition where, to each other. So they're where? not being directed in the same uh, direction by gravity um, right there. So there's no that practical amazing. demonstration of this at all. That gravity amazing. exists, though. Weather. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, have gravity and wind. called free body diagrams. The forces interacting at any point of the atmosphere are generally different than any other point. The summation of yeah, the this... effects causes the local phenomenon. So despite the yeah. fact that we don't have a demonstration of this constant gravity containment, we're going to make all these workarounds? I'm going to have to it's drop them off. No, 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 not a workaround. It's just a summation of all the processes going on at any point. Yeah, it just feels way too much like special pleading. If you're going to special plead like that, I'm going to special plead for my model. Constant, constantly evolving summation of all the individual processes going on. Okay, then I'm going to say it's a summation of all of the ether flowing over the Earth. So we're going to need to see how this relates to reality. What are you saying, Merle? I was just going to say to Big Gambino, like, when he says gravity, what do you mean? The so that's force derailing. Wow, you don't know what gravity yeah, I'd like is to still? hear that too, Big Gambino. Here's your moment to shine since you derailing. finally came out to play. Yeah, we, we, board we, warrior. Description, most we talk about um, Newtonian gravity versus space time curvature. That's basically where the question is. the same thing. No, no, we, we don't even talk about Einstein. It didn't even but matter. Let, let, let the Big Gambino say it. Come on. 
He finally came up well, with an orbital mechanic. Yeah, that means you've got to be quiet, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to answer. So in orbital mechanics, it's easiest just to use the Newtonian equations. There's no reason to invoke, uh, you know, Einsteinian equations unless you 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 need to do something like uh, ultra precise precision, like GPS satellites. But uh, you know, uh, m1 m2 times capital G over r squared is a very accurate description of the force of gravity. What if the force well, is coming from the I, I, I'm just, well, hold, on, just, hold on, hold on, hold on. You were talking about Gambino. Gambino. Can you give I'm, Merle an appropriate response to his question? I did. Well, I, I just had a I just had a follow up question, and then I'll leave it. Um, like, because all these um, like probes in space, like, what's all keeping them relative to each other? And physics, ordinary physics. Magic, magic, metaphysics. No, so, that's not what I said. Well, ordinary I, physics. I give you an explanation for gravity. Gravity is a downward acceleration towards the center of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. In the scope. Oh, you don't know that Earth. that's wrong, eh? You know that that's wrong now. That that's not the description. That's of not that. wrong. That's accurate. Not wrong. Oh, really? You more an explanation outdated. than he can outdated. handle. Okay? That's like a hundred year old. It's, it's you don't know fair. the new gravity. And that's wrong, is he? I see. Don't pretend you understand the two representations of gravity. You don't even. You, you're, you're the guy that thinks that you can feel speed. We can't even like listen to anything you say. Hey, Gambino boy. <laughs> haven't heard of the curvature of space time? Of course, I have. I don't say, you understand. I'm, I'm sure you can accurately represent that, Montreal. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, tell us what the curvature what Einstein but, said. But the Gambino was using the old, the old gravity. Actually, not old, smart, not like, old. Like you know, ways of explaining the same thing. It's plenty useful. Well, stuff. I'm just a humble flatty, but I, I see that they Even obviously tried to steal the ether the with the curvature of space-time as opposed to the curvature of the ether. A vacuum, nothing cannot bend, as uh, Tesla said. That's absurd and preposterous. It looks like they were trying to replace the ether the moment the ether pointed toward a much more slowly moving Earth, if it was moving at all. There's no practical talk demonstration of ether. Of yeah, talk about out of date. Yeah. Ether's out Yet they keep on returning to it conceptually. The conceptions that they have currently, space-time, quantum foam, quantum fluid, give space properties and are qualitatively no different than the ether. So I think that we're being given lies and deception at that point. You have to prove that. That, that, that ether experiment uh, was not supposed to show any motion. It did not deal with motion of the Earth. It was trying to prove the movement of the Earth at 66,000 miles per hour, which computes no, no, the 30 kilometers per second of ether drift no, that was that expected in the experiment. No, but that's not true, Lemon. You're lying. Yeah, they, so what they were they were trying to prove, Brenda? What were they trying to they prove? Were, they were exploiting Earth's motion to detect ether. Ether was not so a you, substance to detect. Uh, that no also shows detect. some uh, erroneous interpretation because ether was not thought of as a substance to detect. It was thought of as the necessary and intuitive framework to explain why it appeared that light slowed down going this way and sped up going this way in the interferometer and came back out of phase. It was a, a framework that was accepted, not a substance to extract or prove. Based yeah, off of that framework, you should detect 30 kilometers per second of ether drift. They were lucky if they got 5 to 8, but they still got an ether drift. Just not enough ether drift to prove that the Earth moved around the sun at the speeds that they uh, envisioned. None of this is actually true, Lemon. You're lying. You're just lying. And that no. there was a problem, right, uh, Lemon? Is that where they came up with relativity? The, the yes. Magician? Oh, no, deny the scriptures and deny this uh, the evidence of our senses that the earth is motionless no. as probably in the center of everything and not moving. There was a at political the time, decision. At the time of Mackerson Morley, they did not yet come with, up, up with relativity. Right? That is First of all, ether so, is a perfect fluid also, that appears to flow in and out of matter. So how would you extract it or prove it in the first place? It appears the you would prove it indirectly. Appears. You would not extract it directly anyway. Where Based off of the it, theoretical way that they looked at it, Michael Smolly did, did not have to, did not deal with the motion of the Earth. It dealt with the motion of of light in in regards to if if there is a medium, right? That was the question. If there's a medium for light to propagate, and they did not find any one of this. So That's no, because it, they inferred that the medium would have to exist and give them the speeds around the sun that they envisioned. That was by inference. That, that was not by extraction. That was not by direct detection. That was by inference and theoretical consideration. No, and the theoretical you know, considerations aren't even you know, consistent. There were, 
but you know there were later experiments which showed the same, which proved the same, and they found less and less and less motion when they were more and more exact. So still found a there were later experiments. Threat. Marcus Morley is yeah. one of the first in a long row of experiments. You are aware of that. And none of There's them hundreds of experiments by exactly. Dayton Miller that prove some sort of positive persistent ether drift. It appears to be a sinusoidal drift that varies throughout the year, that varies based off of your location on the Earth, that varies based off of your elevation, that varies based uh, off different considerations, even the housing of the instrument. Dayton Miller did hundreds of ether experiments, and then they threw him under the bus by saying that there had to have been some sort of heat error in his experiments, leading to um, uh, errors in his experiments. Even they threw him under the bus. Yeah. After that's years that's of experimentation, politics. this is just politics. This is nothing about politics. Right? Right? This isn't even science. Who does it, Lemon? They didn't throw him under the bus. He failed. Right there is your failure, Lemon, because... If it varies over the year, how is Bob telling us it has 15 per hour's drift? That's what's demanded by your model. You take no, 360 degrees and divide it by 24 it. hours, and mathematically, based off of mathematical metaphysics, you say that it should be 15 it's degrees per hour of drift by your philosophical mathematical declaration, because 360 no, divided by 24 no, gives you 15 degrees. Answer. That's Stop crying, Lemon. Why is it persistently 15 degrees per hour if it's very low? Bob Nodell said it was 7 degrees. It wasn't even 15. Yeah, they just took the sound bites and did it later. They don't say that. They always misquote it. Hey, your master that you said proved your drift, he also says that it varies due to the luminiferous ether. Yeah. Quote the man yeah, no, correctly. He done that in modern physics. Bob Noodle, Bob Noodle you're liars, you're lying. Bob Noodle, Bob Noodle even said it does not look good for that flat Earth. <laughs> no. Yes, yeah. and then he continued on saying, when they did other experiments yeah. at different yeah. heights, that it varies. Oh, they they didn't he was that. Did you get that? And he was, so, he was so incredulous that he even had to add, had to in, uh, insert that that uh, gyroscope into into solid bismuth, right? Uh, almost like you, Montreal, so incredulous. Still, he, he, no, you're yeah. misquoting the man. You're misquoting the man. Incredulous. Yeah, still, he found a reading of 15 drift. degrees, yes. Where, but then he did other. Where's tests, that data? Is he, and he where's got the data? Varying still, he found drift. He I found drift. Where's that him, But Mike. do where's not misquote the man. Play the Why is that data? Drums. Drift. He found the drift. No, he didn't. The thing is, he also technically, it's supposed to be 15 times she the sign of your latitude. Listen. The sign of your latitude what? part gives you a number that uh, ranges from 0 to 1. And so basically, yeah. you would get a number that would go from 0 all the way to 15, depending on your latitude anyway. So even that's not quite correct. It's 15 times the sign of your latitude to get the uh, more correct number or whatever anyway. So there's a bunch of technicalities even with this. It's just I a propaganda this. piece by Netflix because they're in on the globe con. That's it. No, no. Lemon, yes, they lied to him. They didn't show the whole thing. Everywhere. They miss. They misquoted the oh, whole the thing. Well, not misquoted. They cut out. They cut no, out. No, they didn't misquote. Not not misquoted. Read his read. read. Him. <laughs> no, Fifteen no. degrees an hour. That's what he found. Yes, and what else did he find, Brenda? Nothing. Um, he, he also detected the motion of the Earth around the Sun. Incorrect. Yes. Yeah, incorrect. I can tell you what he found. Let me tell addition. you what Bob said. He said, Yeah, I can you... tell you what he no, found. No, I'll in tell addition. you because you're full of shit. What Bob said More is what, so the, what he detected coming up. was from the luminiferous ether. No, no, he said, moron. No, no, no. He did a um, second understand? experiment. Nothing as he, as he, to do with the Earth's rotation. Are as he listened to me, he did in second. Do not the, the thing the he man. said. As he, as he, as he, but uh, as he, um, like you were saying, saying, sir. Oh my uh, God, hold on, let me saying something. What you're saying? Yes, yes. As he, what yeah. Bob uh, the noodle said um, was that he did in second experiment um, some kind kind of a tube. I'm not sure anymore to uh, prove that it is picking up the ether, like the um, movement of the sky above him, but. 
um, he came to the conclusion that it wasn't the ether because he has still got the same results. He changed. You're it a to liar. Truth. He spoke no, about no, 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 no. Days ago on Brandon's, you sir are a liar. Oh, he he the the show, information he based off of the two days ago. He's going you off sir, are a liar. information. He's going off of old information. The Netflix propaganda piece, which will um, uh, cherry pick without further information yeah. later yeah. to corroborate yes. what was said originally. That's all it did is quote him. But there's yeah, later he, uh, he, uh, he, revelations. He, 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 Bob is looking yeah, for the ether it, now. Bob. He's looking okay, for the ether now, not for the most of the earth. A shoe, He's, we can experiment on a shoe. How do you like that, Brenda? Mm -hmm. yes, you experiment on a shoe. always going to be known for that, Brenda. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Experiment on a shoe. How up your ass is that shoe, Essie? You can experiment on everything. The interesting thing. People use Bob's own words against him. When, oh, when, yeah, when, yeah, when he, part of his words, when he, part of his when he, words, uh, blue, that's when the he, point. He said it. He said when it when he times. should be more yeah, careful yeah. when he talks. When he, well, thought nobody, is, uh -huh. when he thought that when he thought that nobody was listening, he said to another guy, "Currently, it does not look good for flat Earth." Uh, yep. In regards to his experience. Look, if that makes right? you feel good, if that gives you a tingly sensation, but, go with that. But. Uh, there is it, more it, to what down. he said. No, the point is, you. it's his own words, Essie. And in, in another video, he plainly said it shows 15 degree rotation. Yes, and I told you he updated those words. There's more words. He spoke more words yesterday oh, on Brandon's. Now, it's up to you if you want to listen to those words or not. Oh, I don't particularly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, so he's updated his model later. Yeah, but he's, he's providing it. Huh? No There's no data to back up what he says either. He's going against his own data. Weird. His results show uh, 15 degrees an hour rotation. Say it, Brenda. Say it. I believe What's the physics, the Brenda. Donut, Brenda? Is it I believe hole? the physics, Brenda. What's and in the, the center physics of a donut, Brenda? Your brain. Brenda, I believe the physics and the physics point to a substance of space called ether that is flowing gently over the earth while it is motionless and at rest and moves uh, not. It's been disproved, Lemon. We but that would be the only thing that Lemon believes in that he has no proof of. So it's at least consistent on that point. You're so materialistic, so atheistic, you will deny any sensible framework if it points back to a geocentric, motionless earth that concords with the scriptures. I believe the physics. I believe the physics, not the metaphysics of the Greek pagans. I do not believe the metaphysics of the Greek pagans. Lemon? Exactly, Lemon. A like Bible gas is pressure not a physics next to book. a container lemon? and next to a vacuum without a container. Physically impossible, Lemon. Or not You're right. next to a vacuum. That's not how the yeah, atmosphere nobody works. Nobody has ever said that. Hang on, hold on. A thousand times I've heard. I've heard What's the fire uh, proof God? I don't. It's not out part of it. Well, believe it, they may not be saying it directly, but it does. It's similar. He's talking. Oh, my God. And you mentioned this. You're misrepresenting. We are. You're, yeah. We are not saying. We are not misrepresenting. Representing it, Lemon. Not at all. You're, the you're trying to fade into a is not is not pressure next to anything. It is a constant decrease in pressure. But you're basically moving the goalpost by saying it's a gentle gradient to nothing, oh, as opposed to oh. just a simple, um, less obfuscatory uh, statement. That's less foggy and less hazy. That we're next to a vacuum anyway, which is basically correct. You're just trying to kick no, the can down the road and say it's a gentle gradient toward nothing. Find, but we know well, we I know find, it's a gentle gradient. We know accusing, that. I find I find you accusing me of moving the goalpost laughable, Lemon. I really do. That is yeah. not moving the goalpost. There has never been any different definition of what a gradient is, Lemon. If you can find it, bring it up and show it. Well, well, you bear false witness, Lemon. Well, rather than state truth plainly and clearly yeah, where man. we can guide experimentation and action, he's trying to fade into a fog of obfuscation well, and so, as opposed to saying a plain, a fog of clear obfuscation. statement that we are a pressurized system next to a oh, vacuum, yeah, which is true. You try to go uh, with a gradient, which is basically no, saying the same true. thing. It's a gradient. It we know that at the top of a mountain, we know that at the top of a mountain, the air gets thinner. Wow, that should be written down. A fog of obfuscation. Hang on. 
That is I like an it. outright lie, Lena. Do you guys agree that at the top of a mountain the air is thinner than it is at the base? Do you guys agree with that though? Or, or 